What's going on everyone? John Lazaz here. We're going to be taking a crack at a Battlefield guide today. And considering that there are so many new players coming to Battlefield 4 due to the hype with Battlefield 2042, there are a lot of people who are coming into the game and maybe a little confused about one particular mechanic. This mechanic in particular is something called weapon spread, and it is something that typically gets confused with the likes of recoil, for example. Now, for those who are veterans of the Battlefield franchise, you know, this might not be a super useful video for you, but for those who are new to the game or maybe just want to brush up and learn some of the ins and outs of the game in particular, I feel that I have a pretty good understanding of how weapon spread works, and I'm going to do my best to put it in as simple of a way as possible. But I'm also going to give you options here. For some of you who just want a quick explanation, you guys can use the timestamp down below to skip to the quick explanation of how spread works and how you can manage the spread in the game. And for those who want to get more in depth and learn a lot more about the specifics of weapon spread, some of the differences, you know, how spread works in general and what its purpose is, you can go ahead and you can go to those specific parts or you can just continue watching the video all the way through. At this point in time, I don't particularly care much for playing the algorithm or anything like that. Really, I just want to make sure that whatever information I'm giving you is helpful and helps you get better at the game. So let me go ahead and just jump right into it. Simply put, spread is a balancing mechanic in FPS games where bolts fired will deviate further and randomly from the original point of aim, the longer and or faster the weapon is fired. In Battlefield 4, spread affects all assault rifles, carbines, PDWs, DMRs, LMGs, and handguns. The longer you hold the trigger on a full auto weapon, the more spread increases. The same effect occurs the faster you fire a semi-auto weapon. To manage spread, you can either play within the range in which your particular weapon's max spread does not cause you to miss your target, or you can slow down the pacing of your shots enough so that your spread resets and your shots are more closely grouped to the original point of aim. In Battlefield 4, if you would like to counter the effects of spread, on all full auto weapons, you simply fire rhythmically in 3-5 to five round bursts while countering recoil. For semi-auto weapons, fire the weapon at a pace where spread is minimal while countering the recoil. Spend some time in the test range practicing your burst or firing rhythm. Allow just enough time for your weapon's spread to reset to zero before bursting or firing again and your shots will become significantly more accurate over time. All right, now that we've got that out of the way, let's get into the nitty gritty, shall we? So what is weapon spread? Well, first let me tell you what it is not. Weapon spread is not recoil. They kind of have a little bit of a relationship, but they are two different mechanics entirely. Recoil is when the weapon will rebound from where you originally shot it and you'll see it actually climb up and move up in a certain pattern. Usually in a lot of games, recoil is predictable and can be countered. Unless, of course, it's random, like it kind of is in Battlefield 5. It's a whole different can of worms there. We're not going to get into that today. Spread, on the other hand, is a completely different mechanic. Spread is what is considered a random deviation from the original point of aim that increases as you hold down a trigger longer on a full-auto weapon or if you fire a semi-auto weapon faster then it's probably intended to. The purpose of this mechanic is to help relegate weapons to a specific effective range. So for example, a person can't just fall out of you with any assault rifle from across the map and just hit all headshots all the time. It's also used as a sort of counter for macro abuse in which a player can basically program a perfect counter for recoil into their mouse or whatever peripheral they're using so that they don't have to counter recoil whatsoever and just hit perfect headshots all the time. No cheats required there technically, but, you know, spreads there to help try to make that a little more difficult for those people. One good example of a game that has like perfectly predictable recoil patterns but no spread is Rust. As a matter of fact, if you talk to any Rust veteran, you know, they'll, they'll all tell you about how macro abuse is like a really big problem. You'll see guys using what I think is the equivalent to an AK in that game, and they're just, they just beam people from like across the map, you know, just full auto spraying people in the face, like no problem. Yes, you can learn the recoil perfectly and you can master it, uh, but you know, there's nothing there to keep someone from doing that. Now, I'm sure some of you are probably going to think that Counter-Strike, for example, is an example of a game that has perfectly predictable recoil patterns, and... You're partially correct about that, but what you probably didn't know is that Counter-Strike does have spread, and I'm going to show that to you. All right, here we are on the Recoil Master Workshop map. I'm going to be using the AK, and I have bound the fire button to the keyboard, so that way there's no mouse movement involved whatsoever. Um, as you can see, there's an option to turn off spread, so, I mean, I'm pretty sure there's no arguing now. The spread does exist in the game. I'm going to go ahead and just turn it off reset it 
and I'm going to show you what the recall pattern looks like without spread. All right, why don't we go ahead and reload and do it again. And one more time for good measure. As you can see, the bullets hit the same spots every single time. That's because the recoil patterns are set in a fixed manner. Generally, this is how recoil works in most games, including Battlefield to some extent. Well, let's see what it looks like when we turn spread on. All right, here we go. Pattern looks a bit different from before. Let me go ahead and fire again. Interesting, huh? Look at that. All landing in different spots. Let's do it one more time. I also want to note one other thing. Notice that the reticle in the center gets bigger as you fire. That's sort of the game's way of telling the player that spread is increasing on the weapon. So at this point, I'm pretty sure there's no disputing that CSGO does indeed have spread that needs to be accounted for. And the same thing also goes for Battlefield as well. Now, I'm not here to say that Counter-Strike has the same gunplay as Battlefield 4, because it definitely doesn't. Nor am I here to argue whether or not spread is a good mechanic in FPS games. That is a discussion for a entirely different video. What I am here to say, though, is that spread exists, and it is something that you can account for, and it is something that you can counter. Now, in order to get into the meat and potatoes of what spread is, we kind of have to first distinguish recoil from spread, okay? So, all weapons have recoil in the game. Recoil is typically represented in a fashion where you will see the camera in the crosshair, which stays locked at the center of the screen at almost all times. The camera will move with each shot. It'll move vertically and it'll also move horizontally. You can counter recoil by countering the movement of that recoil itself in an opposite fashion. So if it's moving up and to the right, you move your mouse down and to the left. In regards to horizontal recoil, that is typically something you can't reasonably control. In some ways, you can control it based on movement, but a lot of the times, horizontal recoil tends to be too difficult to control reasonably. So in most cases, you approximate the direction in which the recoil is moving, and then you counter accordingly based on that average. Spread, on the other hand, places the shots as spread gets bigger, outside of that point of aim. At times, you might accidentally confuse it for something like horizontal recoil. But if you slow down the footage and you pay attention at some moments as you're full autoing, that some of your shots deviate really far from both the center of your screen and from the crosshair. This is spread in action. You can't predict spread. You can't control spread necessarily, but you can take measures to reduce the effects of spread. So let me go ahead and try to understand how spread works in Battlefield 4 first. If we were to look at the profile of, um, I don't know, your typical assault rifle in Battlefield 4, if we were to look at the end of the barrel and we were to draw what is essentially a cone coming out from the gun itself, this is basically a good way to represent how spread works in the game. The closer you are to the barrel of the gun, the less spread will affect the weapon. The further away you get from the barrel of the gun, the more spread will be apparent. As you either fire a semi-auto rifle or a full-auto gun faster, or for a longer period of time, that cone will get wider. And shots have a tendency to land on the outside edges of that cone. They don't always land on the outside edges, but they have a tendency to land there. This is what some people in the community will call random bullet deviation. Now there are two particular stats in Battlefield that exist that pertain to spread. You've got spread increase per shot, and then you've got spread decrease. Spread increase per shot happens with each bullet that is fired in rapid succession in the game. For every bullet that's fired, your spread circle or cone will increase and get bigger. Spread decrease happens when you stop firing. As far as some other factors in the game that affect your spread, things like suppression can affect your spread, your movement, jumping, transitioning from standing to prone or standing to crouch, sprinting, falling, taking a bullet or taking damage. All these things can have an effect on your weapon spread. But one thing seems to remain consistent in the game is that your first shot will always be the most accurate, as long as your spread decrease has reset your spread to complete zero. You can also reduce the effects of spread by crouching itself. So if you're crouched down and you're firing, the spread will actually tighten up a little bit. 
And if you're prone, you'll also tighten up spread as well. This is why people hate bipod LMGs so much. Or prone campers. They got, you know, less spread that they have to deal with. Trust me, I feel your pain. Now, with all these things in the game affecting your ability to be able to hit your shots, how is it that we go about countering this sort of thing? Well, why don't we hop into the test range and I can show you guys how to do that. All right, here we are on the test range. I made sure to drop some ammo next to me so I can just reload whenever I need to. But uh, I like to use this little hut here to sort of demonstrate recoil. Simply because... I don't get that. Simply because uh, the, when you shoot at this wall, it doesn't break apart like it would over in the uh, the target area. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first use... I'm going to be using the AEK to demonstrate this because it has a lot of recoil and a lot of spread on it. So it's going to kind of highlight the uh, the spread and recoil a lot. I'm not particularly great at it, but we're going to do our best to show you what's going on. I've also made sure to bind the fire button and click to ADS. That way we don't have to worry too much about mouse influence to demonstrate this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just fire some shots first at the wall. So you take a look at what the recoil pattern looks like. As you see, this is probably about like 10 meters out, and there's just a lot of recoil on it. it. goes up and to the right. If we move over a little bit over here, we fire again. We'll do this one more time. As you can see, when you look at these two patterns, like, despite the fact that uh, they all went generally up and to the right, where the bolts landed was different every single time. And this has to do with the influence of spread once you're holding down to, to fire. It increases a little bit every single time with every bullet that fires the longer you hold the trigger button down. Now while I'm not amazing at controlling the recoil on this, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing and this time I'm going to control the recoil. I'll do this one more time. As you can see from that distance out there, like, that's pretty insane. Like, I don't know how you expect... That's only 10 meters out. You know, you might hit most of your shots on a target from that distance, but if you go even further out, like, it's gonna get even worse than that. So I'll do this one more time. Probably about twice the distance, and we'll try that again. I mean, even if you did keep, keep your crosshair on the target, like, you, you're probably not gonna hit a lot of those shots. Alright, I've just reset so these some fresh walls to shoot at. Now, the main reason why you want to fire in 3 to 5 round bursts in this game is so that you can reduce the spread increase. Whenever you stop firing in this game, your spread resets to zero fairly quickly. And that's why bursting is very effective. With every gun, there's going to be a little bit of a rhythm to it and you can learn it. Um, but generally, what you will do is you will fire in 3 to round 5 round bursts and you will pull down to compensate for the recoil as you normally would. Now to demonstrate how this works, I'm going to back up just a little bit. We're going to try to fire at the wall here. I'm going to go in three to five round bursts. We'll see how that works out. I mean, already, if you compare that to the way our spread pattern looked with a full auto, I mean, that's pretty considerable. And what happens if we five round bursts without compensating for the recoil? I wasn't even compensating for the recoil, and I probably would have just ended up hitting a lot of my shots if I was just aiming for the body. It might have even landed a couple of headshots in the process. Why don't we try firing in a slightly faster rhythm this time? I don't know if you've noticed this, but the pattern is fairly straight. You don't have a whole lot of horizontal spread going on there. Bullets aren't really deviating too far from the center. Let's say we do that again, but this time I pull down to try to compensate. Now, even though I was pulling down to compensate, that wasn't the most amazing looking spread pattern. What I was probably doing there is I was firing too quickly after bursts. So just for comparison's sake, I'm going to shoot at this wall full auto one more time, and then I'm going to do another one where I do a grouping that is controlled with bursting. Alright. Let's do a bursting now.
we take a look at the patterns here, you get a lot more deviation going left to right, as opposed to what you see here. Now, it's not completely perfect, probably because my recoil control is amazing, but if you focus on learning how to control the recoil on this one and learning the proper pacing with bursting on this gun, it can be a freaking laser beam. I wanted to get a reset one more time. I'm going to be standing next to this pole right about here in front of the uh, ATV as a reference point. We're going to fire at it. We're just going to do some bursting. I'm going to try to control it. And then we're going to do another one where I do full auto and control the recoil. So with the burst pattern first. All right. Well, let's try it with full auto, re full auto and recoil control. I mean, if you're not convinced at this point of how you need to be firing weapons in this game, I mean, I don't know what else to tell you at this point. So at this point, the question you're probably asking is, so how can I practice this and get better at it? Well, all you really need to do is you can come into the test range, and you can test with each weapon what the most effective burst pattern is, and where you get the most control, how long it takes for the weapon to reset to zero spread, and then you just kind of learn where the weapon's most effective ranges are. Uh, typically, something like the AAK. Somewhere in between like 1 meter to 30 meters is the most effective for it. Damage drop off starts to factor in I think after about 15 Ooh. meters. And if you want to start firing further out, you might need to start firing in smaller bursts or micro bursts. You may also have to pace your shots a little differently. So for here, you just come to the targets, you can just practice like so. You might want to start practicing with body shots first. And another really good way you can go about it is you can do the shortest burst possible at first. Make it so that you can accurately hit headshots at different ranges. Right here is about, you know, 30 meters. Let's go to 30 meters right here. And start with like maybe like anywhere between like one to one to two round bursts at first. I think if I recall correctly, at 30 meters, this gun takes about three shots to the head to take down. We'll put it in a single fir single fire. So you know you need to land at least three, three headshots to take someone down at that range. So what you can do is you can learn to fire in three round bursts. And you know you got it down if you can consistently hit that one burst and take a target down with a headshot. As you can see, the spread is starting to really factor in there. Now, if I were to just full auto at that range, it takes longer to take the target down. Unless I go for the body. If I just go for straight body shots, it goes down at about five, six, six shots. If I go in burst patterns, target goes down much faster. Now, believe it or not, this same concept also applies to DMRs. It also applies to LMGs, SMGs, uh, also applies to handguns as well. Basically, when you fire closer to the weapon's max fire rate, you'll have more spread the more you fire. I'll demonstrate this right now. Granted, my recoil control wasn't amazing on that. If we slow down the pacing a little bit on the weapon, we should see a much tighter grouping. Not bad. Let's get a little closer. Probably a little bit easier to demonstrate it from here. Now if we fire really quickly. And I'll slow down the footage so that way you can kind of see where the bullets land in relation to where the reticle was. Now the trick with DMRs is to simply find that sweet spot where you can fire it as fast as possible, but also maintaining its accuracy without spread affecting it too much. This can be practiced by using a metronome. Uh, if you don't know what that is, you can just Google metronome and then you can just uh, learn it, 
Set, learn to set what's known as the BPM. You can start with the weapon's max rate of fire. Whatever the ma weapon's max rate of fire is, you can set the BPM to that. And then you gradually lower it down until you get to a point where you find that sweet spot. I'm sure after enough practice, you'll be doming people from across the map like all the other experienced Battlefield players are. So as long as you keep in mind in this game that pacing is the most important thing when it comes to firing your weapon, you'll be good to go and you'll be a lot more accurate down the road. That'll wrap up the video and I hope you all enjoyed it. And if you did, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Stay up to date with everything going on on the channel. Also, be sure to hit the bell icon for notifications. That way you know when I'm uploading to the channel. You can also follow me over on Twitter and Instagram. I'm pretty active on Twitter, so it's a good place to get a hold of me. Of course, there's a Discord link down in the description below. You can join up, have a chat, talk Battlefield, maybe even squad up. Look forward to getting to know you guys. And, you know, if you got any information you want to share, some corrections to make, be sure to leave that down in the comments as well. I'm always open to trying to improve. Always open to making sure that I'm giving out the correct information. If this ends up being one big video full of bad information, then I'll just end up redoing it. Appreciate y'all taking the time watching the video. Thank you so much. And have a pleasant day.